Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at the new Inspire Scanner from RevoPoint. So this new scanner is going to be initially up on Kickstarter, and then normally goes on to sale on their website. And the blurb on their website makes this look pretty promising. This is meant to be a more budget-friendly 3D scanner, with a range of new innovations that's meant to make it just easier to use and scan, including new software, some bits inside the scanner that's going to make it easier to use to scan, and they've also got things like a new mat that's going to come with it to help you scan. So bear in mind I've got one of their previous scanners, and while it does a really great job, it's not always the easiest to use on a large surface, and it has a tendency to lose track of where it's scanning if you move too fast, which if you're doing it by hand is very easy to do. So let's have a look at how this one fares. So I guess we've got to start with the almost obligatory unboxing video, but boring, right? Well, actually, I thought this was worth including because this is meant to be the budget version of a 3D printer and I expect it to not have much with it. So we've got the standard calibration board and then underneath it, the fabled mat that was shown on the website. And I thought that was all there was going to be. And yet below it, there was this disc which then goes on a turntable. So actually, we're not missing anything here. We've still got a fairly decent turntable, which... To be honest, I'm probably going to end up using to display miniatures on because it's got a decent power to it. And then we've got this handheld device which also doubles as a tripod. So we're all looking pretty good here. For something that's meant to be a more budget device, it's still got all of the things you'd expect to find in a decent 3D scanner setup. So we're off to a really good start here. Now, it does feel a slightly bit cheaper. I just think it's because it weighs less. There's no actual real difference to this in my other 3D scanner, other than a slight difference in weight. And other than that, yeah, we're off to a really good start as far as I'm concerned. But let's have a look at how well it actually scans. Now, the first thing I actually scanned was a can, and that might seem a weird choice, but let me just explain my logic here. It's a can with sort of a crumple in one side because it's something that it's very difficult to actually model, at least in a way that's realistic. But more importantly, in the past, this has been a difficult thing for my scanner to actually scan. The reason for that, I think, is because, well, it's basically a round object, which means there's not a lot of features to mark off of it. So I had this set up to use the markers, and you can see as this goes round, it's tracking those markers really well. Definitely better than the old software used to and my other 3D scanner. I'm not sure if that's the software or the scanner itself or the markers. Interestingly, the markers are different to the ones that I've got before, which were just black with a white dot, and these are sort of metallic, so maybe they shine better. You'll notice that I've sprayed the cam white, that helps it scan better, but this is definitely something that my old scanner had trouble with. So this is quite interesting to see how well it's doing. Now, on a bit of a side note, the software is really nice. This new Revo.5 software is really cool. It's got all the tasks at the top, and then whenever you've selected it to do, it appears on the right-hand side with some instructions of what you need to do as well, which is a really nice touch. Apparently, this has been remade from the last bit of software, basically from the ground up. And interestingly, while the buttons and the names of everything are still the same, so I could work everything out, it does do a really good job. And then all the post-processing can be done in here as well. So you can see that now as it's going through this mesh cloud, and then we can start bringing this together. Once you've converted your scan to a mesh cloud, you then convert it to a full object. And I'm just going to speed through that because it's just processing it, basically. Now, you've also got some options to automatically fill in things like holes, which I've put up to, I think it was something like 30%, and that seems to do a fairly good job from what I've seen. And that then results in this end pod of having this can that's scanned. So let's bring this into Blender and have a look at how good this actually is. Well, first off, we don't appear to have a lot of the issues I was kind of expecting. There's no join mark where the scanner didn't really recognise where places were joined together, typically on the back surface, which would be just here where it's rounded and flat. And the detailing's really good. We've got this really nice texture of this crumpled can without really any errors, which is really nice. Now look at the top, there's a slightly flat bit, that's where it's filled in a hole. That's sort of my fault for not having the scanner slightly higher up. And I will say there is a slight graininess to the outside texture here. That might be me having been a bit excessive with the white spray paint when I was spraying it white, because this originally was a Tango can and therefore is mostly black, so getting it white took quite a lot of spray, and I was a little bit impatient to get 3D scanning. So that's probably more my fault than anything else. But there is something we can probably do about that, and that's because in the Revo Point software, there is something we can do to actually smooth it out. So I'm just going to run through that process really quickly. All it is is pressing a button, letting it process, and then redoing the 3D model from it and then we can bring it back into Blender and have a look at it. And actually, looking at it, it looks much better. 
it does miss out some of the fine detail in that smoothing, but I could have just reduced the iterations, and I think there's a bit of trial and error there. But again, really good, and so far I'm quite impressed with what this scanner is doing, so let's try on something a little bit more challenging. Now for this I wanted to grab a real world object, and to be honest I looked around and there was a boot. And this seemed like quite a bad thing to scan because one, it's got black surfaces at the bottom which it's not going to like scanning. And also it's got things like shoelaces, stitch marks, a lot of different textures and a lot of bits where it folds in on itself. Where again, my old scanner would have difficulty recognising what I'm scanning as I'm going around this. Especially on such a big object. And here's the results in Blender and I mean, look at it. I really wasn't expecting this, in fact this is actually the second time I've recorded this because the first one I did live and I've got a thing about not swearing on the channel and I swore because I was quite surprised at how well this came out. Now we've got this information at the bottom, that's just the program trying to fill in holes where there's no information at the bottom of the boot. It'd be really easy to cut off or I could have scanned the bottom of the boot and that'd be fine, I just didn't at the time. But I mean look at it, it scanned the dark areas on the sole really well around the edging it's got all of the information for the cleats that hold the laces in. It's got the laces and there's no undercuts under the laces because it's filled in those holes. And you can even see the little bits like the stitching. I mean, I'm really impressed by this. Just look at it. It's filled in the hole at the back, but look at the texturing you've got that's there. And bear in mind, this is not anything other than geometry because we're looking at this in Blender without any information on top of it. This is only the geometry that it has scanned and therefore what it would show on something like a 3D print. So all in all, way more than I was expecting for what's meant to be a budget 3D scanner. So yeah, I mean, you can make your own judgments on this, but if my aim was to scan something and potentially put it into a game or shrink it down slightly to then 3D print it, this is looking really good. Now I will say there's this weird little bit here. That's not the fault of the 3D scanner. This is actually a sort of tuft that's on my boot. And I'm going to be honest, I wasn't expecting to even pick this up. So I didn't even consider it because 3D scanners are never really good at doing things like fur or hair. So that's just something to bear in mind. But yeah, overall, really, really happy with that. I mean, you can make your own mind up, but let's get on to something which I imagine if you're looking at this channel is something you want, and that is having it scan some miniatures. Now making sure I'm really clear about this, this is not designed for particularly fine detail work on miniatures. I wanted to see what this looks like because I know how I use miniature scans to help me, and it does say that you should be scanning things that are bigger than 5 centimeters. So I thought the side of this Spartan tank would be about the right size, and it would give me an idea of something that I've used previously. I've 3D designed a lot of add-ons for a Spartan, mostly weapons for the side and the front, and I started from a 3D scan, just to make sure that I'm getting everything correctly in place. And there's certain things that you need for that. You don't need every single little bolt on it, but you do need a accurate representation of the general shape. And this is how this came out when transported into Blender. And well, there's a bit of cleanup, which is always the way because it's got the mat underneath it and it's scanning that at the same time. That's really quick to clean up. You just orient it and then boolean out the bottom. But the scan itself, again, really, really solid. You've got all the details you're going to need. Yes, you can't see some of the fine detailing around the door, but you can still make out where the door is. But most importantly, all those large shapes that you're going to need to be able to add something to this model, again, being clear that I don't advocate copying models, but something you're going to want to add onto this, like an additional sponsor or different armor panels, would be really easy to sort from this outline. So if that's what you're looking to do and you're wanting a budget scanner to do it, this could really be the one that's going to help you with that. Now, as I said, this is meant for scanning models that are greater than five centimeters in size. You're not going to be scanning individual infantry with this in any way other than getting a general outline and size. So please don't think this is me saying that this is going to get you something where you can literally just scan it and then 3D print it. That's not what it's designed for and it's not what I'd advocate using a 3D scanner for anyway. At this point, just for completeness, I wanted to bring in a model that I've got that I did scan of this same part using the RevoPoint Mini. Now, the RevoPoint Mini is basically the top end of what you can get from RevoPoint. It's really detailed. You can see what it's like there. I will say, I don't think the software is as good as what comes with the Inspire. That software has really impressed me and its ability to understand where you're scanning is just unbelievable. For example, this track is the first time I scanned it, whereas on the Mini, I had to scan it several times before I got a really 
really good flow to get that scan done, but it does then give you more detail. However, I don't think there's much that you'd be able to do with the Mini scan compared to that Revo Point Inspire scan. And bear in mind the Revo Point Mini costs over $800, and we'll talk about price next. I think this is a really good hit into this sort of affordable industry. Now the other thing I've done just to test it out is scan the same part with the markers and I actually moved around more to get some of the undercuts as well and you can see with this comparison this has given an even better result than the initial one did and once again this software and its ability to recognize those marker points is so much better than what's come before it. So a real up in both the software as well as the technology. So with that, the final thing to do is have a look at the vital statistics of these two scanners. And in the precision department, they are identical. They can go up to 0.02 millimeters, so 20 microns, in terms of the precision they can pick up. And with a point distance of only 0.3 millimeters, the Inspire is still able to pick up really, really fine details. Now, it's not gonna go as fine as the Revo Point Mini, which is 0.05 millimeters, but as we saw on the tank and on the boot, it will pick up really fine textures and any differences that you'd need to model off of. So this is more than capable of doing pretty much anything you're gonna want, bar scan scanning an individual infantry model. And it's absolutely brilliant for scanning something that's a real world size and then shrinking it down. In fact, I think that's where this shines more than anything else. And as well as the awesome extending handle that also acts as a tripod that you get with this, I mean, that was a really pleasant surprise. You can also buy a pack that adds on a battery pack, which you can see me putting on here. So you can use that to power the scanner as you scan as well. And there's additional bits that allow you to then add your phone onto that as well. So you can use an app to be able to then look at this and see what it's doing as you scan. And the software can then take this in and then use it to create the 3D scan geometry that we looked at previously. So let's talk price. And the big one I'm mentally comparing this to is my Revo Point Mini, which is $879 at the time of recording this. So bear that in mind for not a particularly massive difference in terms of quality and no difference in quality if you're scanning something larger. So the Inspire, when it's at full price, is gonna be $439, so about half the price, which to me seems damn good as a one-off payment. Now this is starting to remind me of what basically happened with 3D printers, where they just became more and more affordable without really losing quality. And I didn't think I'd see the same happening with 3D scanners, but it kind of looks like it is. Now, if you are considering this, I would really rapidly get over to the Kickstarter because it's selling really, really fast. And they've got limited amounts on each one, allowing you to get, well, at the moment, 35% off is the best you can do, then 32%, and there's a loaf for 25%. There was originally some for 38% off, but they're already gone. So that's gonna get you a really good saving. And when I got my mini, I purchased it on Kickstarter, saving nearly 40%. So if you're interested, I would get that saving. Hopefully that gives you all the information you want, either to decide that you want this or to realize that it's not for you. Either way, as long as you've got the information, I'm happy. And if you think you want to go even more high end to something like the mini, then do feel free to have a look at the video that I did on that as well. Have a great day, guys.